Sadly, teachings on holiness are no longer prevalent in the church today. Irrespective of what you hear or see, let God's word remain your standard. Do not live by what a teacher or preacher says if it's not in line with God's word. Galatians 1 verse 8 But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. The truth written down in the Bible is your surest guide on the journey to heaven. The Bible has already prophesied about the things that will happen before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must be cautious enough to avoid being carried away by the wind of erroneous teachings. As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, our ultimately goal is to live with God in heaven and for us to reach this goal. The Bible has given us the map way for us to live our life. Today, we will look at Hebrews 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without no man shall see the Lord. This verse highlights a wonderful and yet terrifying reality, the reality that not all people will see the Lord. The truth is, we all will see the Lord, we will all stand before him and see him when we step into eternity. We all know that even the enemies of the Lord shall bow before him and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But this verse is not referring to that day when the whole of humanity past and present will be gathered together and see the Lord. In Hebrews 12 verse 14, he is talking about the continual seeing of the Lord, which will follow after the judgment. After the judgment, there is the separation. Matthew 25 verse 31 to 32. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. After the separation, there's either heaven or hell. This verse is referring to going into heaven and continually seeking the Lord. Throughout endless ages, those in heaven will gaze upon the face of Christ. Two things are essential before you can stand before God peace and holiness. Without these two qualities, you cannot be with God forever. Peace without holiness is not enough. Holiness without peace is also not enough. The Bible commands us to possess these two qualities. We must strive to maintain peace with everyone around us, and we must also live a pure and holy life. We cannot substitute one for the other. James 2 verse 10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. You cannot choose to maintain peace and then fail to live rightly. Having one quality without the other is the same as having none at all. If you desire to see the Lord, you must strive to maintain peace and live in holiness. Being at peace with people means you're walking in love with them. It is not possible for peace to reign where there is no love. The Bible tells us that love covers up a multitude of sins. Instead of picking a fight, getting angry or keeping malice, love helps you to deal with offenses in the right way. As a Christian, you must maintain a life of peace everywhere you find yourself, so that you do not bring shame to the name of the Lord. You must strive to grow in love so that you can lead a peaceful life. So I want to ask you a question. Are you pursuing peace with all people? Those closest people to you tend to be our family members. Do you actively pursue peace with all of those near you? Or does everyone have to tiptoe around you because of your short temper? Follow peace with all men. I've always wondered how long God will take to review each of our lives when we stand before him. Because just like the preacher of old said, our lives are records and they are unchangeable. B.R. Lakin once said, When we are born, we are all born with a blank sheet of paper. We are all given a blank sheet of paper at birth that represents our lives. And then, as we begin to live, we begin to write the history of our lives. And some things that we can write are unchangeable. Therefore, we should be very careful what we write on the pages of our lives. 
We are told to pursue peace with all men. Our neighbors, our husbands, our wives, our children. I have wondered about how I would feel when I am looking back at my life and see the moments where I didn't live up to the word of God. The moments where I knew what the word of God told me to do and yet I decided to go my own way. The moments where I knew I should have apologized but I was too proud to do so. The moments, the moments where I had fallen short from the standard of the word of God. The moments where I let my anger get the better of me. The moments where I should have been long suffering with others but I wasn't. The moments where I should have forgiven others, but yet I held grudges. The moments I should have shown love, but I didn't. As you are listening to me now, the pages of our lives are still being written. What will be written in the rest of your life? Pursue peace with all people. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness has to do with living a life of consecration unto God. There is such a holiness as imputed holiness, where holiness is put to our account by God's kindness. For instance, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. But this is not what this verse is talking about. The verse is referring to a holiness which we can pursue, seek and sought after, just like peace with other people can be sought after and pursued. We are commanded to be holy because God is holy and we are supposed to reflect his image. As God's children, we can't do everything. We can't say everything. We can't follow the trends of the world. Pursue peace with everyone as well as holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. You see, the apostle didn't say attain peace with everyone and holiness. He said pursue. No one can fully attain complete and perfect holiness. Only Jesus did. What the Apostle is speaking of here is the direction of your heart towards holiness and not the level of holiness. We can seek and chase after holiness. What the Apostle is telling each and every one of us is this. Without us continually seeking and chasing for these two things, we will not abide in heaven. He is not saying you will attain these two things, but the direction of your heart will be yearning and seeking for these things. You will be yearning and seeking to live in peace and love with those around you, to not be quick to anger, to not be quick to wrath. Your heart will be turned towards God and things of God. Your heart will turn its back from the world and things of the world and only desire to love what God loves. I have to highlight the fact once more. No one can fully attain complete and perfect holiness only Jesus did. But no true born again Christian is on the same place of holiness as they were five years ago because they moved on seeking for more holiness. So I ask you my friend, are you pursuing peace with everyone? Or are you ready to fight everyone? So I ask you my friend, are you pursuing peace and holiness? Or are you nursing a secret sin that you have been hiding for years? No peace, no heaven. No holiness, no heaven. When you yield to the Holy Ghost in you, your life will surely exhibit the qualities when you yield to the Holy Ghost in you, and it will be much easier to avoid sin. By our own power, we cannot be holy enough in the sight of God. In the Old Testament, the righteousness of the people was called a filthy rag. This was why God sent his Spirit to dwell in us, so that we can have the power to overcome sin and stand before God blamelessly. If you want to walk in peace and holiness, you have to embrace the Holy Spirit to help you live rightly and maintain peace among men. When you walk in the Spirit, it is impossible to fall into sin. The Holy Spirit holds our hands, but I say, walk in the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 If you want to be that peaceful and holy person who will be with the Lord, you have to start yielding to the Holy Spirit as you go about your daily business. The Holy Spirit is our strength. 
We cannot please the Father without Him. As much as you strive and chase after holiness, relax and let the Holy Spirit lead you. If He is the one leading you, you will always find yourself doing His will. Sin will have no hold on you, and ultimately, you will spend eternity with God.